Most people stop at using base 10 blocks to only show the place values of whole numbers, but there are so many other ways to use them. And today I'm going to show you 10 of them, including a few you might not expect. So let's start with number one. Did you know you can use base 10 blocks to model decimals too? They really help students see how place value connects to whole numbers and fractions, which can be written as decimals. And I'll get to that later at number 10. You can use rods to show tenths, units to show hundredths, and compare both to flats that can represent one whole. This makes decimals much easier to picture. Number two, comparing numbers. Whether it's whole numbers or decimals, putting blocks next to each other helps to show which value is greater. And by looking at each place value moving from left to right, students can immediately see how the place value for each number is the same or different. Number three, rounding numbers. Base 10 blocks give students a clear, hands-on way to see which value a number is closest to. By building the number with blocks, students can compare it to the nearest 10, 100, or even whole and actually see which place value it rounds to. Number four, addition. Base 10 blocks make addition much clearer because students can actually see the value of each place as they combine numbers. Just like with comparing and rounding, you can use base 10 blocks to show addition whole numbers and decimals. And when they have more than 10 units or 10 rods, they can trade for the next place value, which shows exactly why regrouping works. Number five, subtraction. Base 10 blocks give students a clear way to understand regrouping when they don't have enough in a place to subtract. With addition, we showed joining two numbers together, but with subtraction, we can show taking from one number using the blocks. And if regrouping is necessary, students can trade one flat for 10 rods or one rod for 10 units to make the subtraction work. Number six, multiplication with equal groups. Students can use units, rods, or a combination of both to build equal groups. They can use strategies they already know, such as repeated addition or skip counting to find the total product. Experiences like this give them a clearer picture of what multiplication really means. And that leads us right into arrays, another effective way to show multiplication with base 10 blocks. Students can line up rods or units in rows and columns to build a rectangle, which shows how multiplication connects directly to area. Arrays like this help students see the total more quickly since they can count by rows or columns instead of one at a time. Okay, there's one more great idea for multiplication that I want to share, but first, if you're finding this useful, go ahead and like this video and subscribe to my channel so you'll know when the next videos in this series are ready. Number eight, multiplication with area models. Base 10 blocks make it easy to build a rectangle and then break it apart into smaller sections. Students can see how multiplying by place value, like tens and ones, creates partial products that add up to the total. And this may seem more advanced, and I'll share more details in an upcoming video, but it's valuable to know about before heading into drawing area models for multiplication with your fourth graders. Number nine, division. Everyone loves division, right? Base 10 blocks help break down what division really means. Students can take a number built with blocks and share those blocks representing 
each digit's place value equally into groups. This gives a clear hands-on model for how division works with both whole numbers and decimals. And finally, number 10, using base 10 blocks to show equivalent decimals and fractions. This connects right back to what we talked about in number one. Students can use rods to represent tenths and units to represent hundredths, then compare both to the flat that represents one whole. Given a number of tenths and hundredths written as a fraction, students can model with the blocks and write the decimal version or they can work in the other direction, starting with the decimal and modeling or writing the fraction, or even mix and match using any combination of those three components in different orders. This makes the relationship between fractions and decimals much easier to understand and gives students multiple entry points to build connections. And here's a fun bonus way to use base 10 blocks. Create houses or other structures using base 10 blocks with a specific value or less than or greater than a specific value. This adds in a layer of creativity, whether representing whole numbers, decimals, or whole numbers with decimals. See all the funny structures or figures you or your students can make. So here's a recap of the 10 ways to use base 10 blocks plus one bonus. One, model decimals. Two, compare numbers. Three, round numbers. Four, add numbers. Five, subtract numbers. Six, multiply with equal groups. Seven, multiply using arrays. Eight, multiply with area models. Nine, divide and 10, show equivalent decimals in fractions. And that bonus, build creative structures with a value challenge. In the remaining videos of this series, you'll get to see examples and learn more about how to use the base 10 block strategies shared in this video so you can give your students or kids even more meaningful hands-on math experiences. And I'll see you there.